Well, here we are. Here we are with the very first book in the Richard and Judy Book Club 2012, exclusively to WH Smith. It's, I know we always say this, but it's an absolute corker of an opener. It's called Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson, who we'll talk to you in a couple of seconds. Um, the concept is electrifying from the first page. Just imagine waking up one morning with absolutely no memory at all of who you are, what you've done, who you know. It's a blank sheet. And imagine that happening every day of your life. All you can remember is what's happened since you woke up that day, and when you go to sleep, it's sponged away again, and you have to start again the next morning. Because the thing is, it's our memories that define us. If we don't know who we are, if we don't remember anything, we aren't anybody. Uh, and that's how this book starts, with a, a woman called Christine, who wakes up in bed with what is to her a stranger, a much older man. She thinks she's uh, been out on the, on the tiles the night before, she's taken something she shouldn't, she's got very drunk, and she's got off with him. So she crawls out of this unfamiliar bed and goes into the bathroom, expecting to see the face of a young woman, 20-something woman, and she's looking into the face of a middle-aged woman. But it's recognisably her. That's how it starts, Steve, and it gets better from there. <laughs> Thank um, you. It's, it's an absolute corker of a thriller, as I say. I mean, the tension is ratcheted up it's remorselessly until <laughs> the very last page. Um, all based on this, this fundamental idea that if we don't remember anything, we're not anybody. Mm. Um, did this come to you in a blinding light? Not really, no. It, it, the, the idea for the book came from, I was reading an obituary um, of a man called Henry Malaison, who's mentioned in the back of the book, and he, um, he was born in Connecticut in the States and had very severe epilepsy as a child, which got worse and worse as he mm. got older until he, he reached the point where he couldn't really function. Um, mm. his, his epilepsy was so bad. Um, and in a sort of last-ditch attempt to cure him, his medication wasn't working. He underwent a, an experimental procedure, an operation, in which they removed the parts of his brain mm. um, that were thought to be responsible for the epilepsy. Right. But what wasn't known until that point, actually, was that those parts of the brain are also responsible for memory. Mm. And so the obituary described how, really, from that day on, from, the, from his operation on, his epilepsy was mostly cured, but he couldn't form any new memories. And uh, right. what struck me when I read about him was that he died when he was uh, 82. Gosh. And the operation was when he was, I think, 27. Oh. Right. So I just, I had this mental image of somebody looking in a mirror expecting to see a 20-something-year-old mm. looking back at them and seeing yeah. instead an old, an old person. And, yeah. uh, and uh, that's where the kind of, the, the, the image of Christine looking in the mirror came and yeah. the book kind of span out from there, really. I was actually um, convinced, because you, 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 you call yourself S.J. Watson, <laughs> I was absolutely convinced this book was written by a woman. You know, <laughs> because, the, because the female character, the, the yeah. central character, Christine, is so beautifully realised. Mm. Did you kind Thank of you. decide yeah. to do the initial because, you, I don't know, you, because you, you thought people might want it to be by one. Well, I, mean, I suppose in a way, yeah. I mean, it really it was more I, I didn't want it to be an issue. I didn't want people to read the book and think, well, this is clearly, a ma you know, looking for the join, if you like. Right. I think, mm -hmm. I think yeah. you know, I wanted people to just read it as a book and not, not to come into it, I suppose. So I thought using my initials means it's just not an issue. Hopefully. Yeah, good. <coughs> is, is, obviously, memory loss is, is, is relatively common in, in, mm. in, in the medical world. Um, is this particular form of memory loss, where everything's remembered from waking up mm. to falling asleep until you wake up the next morning when it's gone again, is, th is that actually known? Is that a known condition? I thought I'd invented it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, because I very much wanted to write the book in the first person, and I thought, you know, most people with this kind of memory loss, my understanding is, would only retain memories for a few minutes, seven yeah. or eight minutes, mm. and then their memories would, would disappear. And I thought, if I was to write a book, about that kind of condition in the first person, it would be very, you know, tedious yeah. and yeah. constant repetition. So, I had to invent um, a scenario in which she could retain memory for a day. Um, but it, it, what was interesting and, and slightly frightening as well, in a way, was that um, after I'd finished the book, I learned that there of a, of a, a woman um, who has a very similar condition um, as my character does, and uh, I, I read about this in, in a newspaper. And what was even more um, um, chilling in a way was that she was also the same age as my character and, and her, um, wow. her memory loss had the same cause. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. um, it was also caused by a car well, accident. I, so I, one of the things, I think the great device, it's not giving anything away here because we find it out pretty quickly, is uh, that you've used as a writer and that Christine uses is that she keeps a diary. Mm. With the help of a psychiatrist, of course, every morning when she wakes up, she's mm. no idea that she's got a diary, she's yeah. no idea where it is, she's no idea who the psychiatrist is, mm. but every day he phones her mm. and yeah. tells her all about yeah. it and she kind of, she starts to write down to her everything. And I should imagine that was very useful to you because otherwise, mm. as, yeah. as you say, it would yeah. be you kind of a complete blank you? Yeah. if you no. never move yeah. on. Yeah. And we, we come to realise gradually 
that there's something very wrong in Christine's life and it's mm. not just her memory. Well, it's, that's because of the diary. One, one day she goes again with a completely blank mind. She's directed to the diary, which she keep, keeps hidden from, mm. from her husband at the bottom of her wardrobe. She goes and opens it and the entry for the previous day is to do with her husband called Ben. Don't trust Ben. Mm. <laughs> oh, imagine reading that, you know, yeah. you've just, you know, been ex it's been explained to you, because he explains to her every morning what's happened, mm. and she's had this accident, and it's like 30 years on or whatever, and then he goes to work and leaves her on her own, and she goes and says, see, that the man who's just told her her fortune is not to be trusted, mm. and, but she doesn't know why, mm. Mm. she hasn't got a clue mm. why, it's a mm. very powerful moment in the book I've got. Yeah, thank you for that, I mean, it was interesting writing that, actually, because I never really saw that coming until I had written that scene in which um, she'd, written, amazing, she'd written Don't Trust Ben. You, yeah. you, you started off with no clear idea of what, I mean, this tremendously creepy central mm. concept is something that came to you, mm. actually, as you were mm. writing. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I read this the obituary and I wanted to, to explore memory. And I, I, but I, what I wanted to do with this book was to just write... Um, almost with no idea really of what the story would be and let yeah. the characters sort of lead me into the story. Yeah. What, what um, we as the reader go through is very similar to what Christine is going through. Mm. Gradually, we don't know who to trust either. Mm. I mean, we, we can believe in her, mm. um, but we, we don't know what if Ben is good, mm. evil, or somewhere mm. in between. And the psychiatrist, mm. is, he up to, is he up to shenanigans mm. and games? We never really know until mm. right, at the, right mm. at the end of the mm. book. Did you, did you worry a bit in the earlier stages that having somebody who was each morning going to wake up in the same uh, condition might make it a hard book to write? You know, you sort of run out of things to yeah, put in. It wasn't just the early stage. <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah, I did realise that. I think I knew f from the word go it was, would be a challenge. Yeah. I think I have a slightly masochistic <laughs> element as a writer, at least. Uh, I, I thought it would be an interesting book to write. And it's interesting what you were saying. I thought it would give me an opportunity to, to, um, to always have the reader inside Christine's head. So yes. whereas Christine has doubts, the reader has yeah. doubts. Exactly it's right, the same yeah. doubts yeah. at the same time and is discovering things. As, as she does. So and I, I could see that it would create lots of opportunities to write an interesting story. And, there are, story. and there, there, are, there are joyful discoveries as well. Mm. I have to tell you, we once interviewed a man who, who lost his memory when he was about 17 mm. in, 1960, in late 1965. And he, he was in a coma for years, and then he came out of it. And he had no memories be, uh, uh, after the accident. Or, or, yes, after the accident, obviously. Mm. Um, so his wife, he was, he was married, his wife tried to educate him on what had mm. happened in the 20 years that mm. he'd been out of it. We did this live interview with him. Uh, and I said, just a minute, when, when did you lose him at me? He said, mm. 1965. I said, were you aware that England was going to play in the World Cup at Wembley? He said, yes. And I said to his wife, have you told him what happened in 66? <laughs> and she said, no, I don't think I have. <laughs> so I said to him, um, here's the news. Yeah. Um, England did very well. He said, how far did we get? <laughs> he said, did Jimmy Greaves play? I said, yeah. yeah. I said, well, we, um, we got to the final. He said, no. <laughs> I said, yes. He said, and what was it? I said, 4-2 against West Germany. <laughs> and he did a little dance. Yeah. He was the last man in England to it's discover no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that England won the yeah. World Cup. Yeah. Can I just ask you, Steve, is this your first published book? It is. It yeah. is, it really? It is, yeah. And uh, what a triumph, because it's now going to be made into a film Thank by you. Ridley yeah. Scott, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds... Like, when, when will that be starting? He forgets. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get all of that for <laughs> yeah. years now. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. It's in casting. I've read the script. The script is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, it's in casting at the moment, so I think it's just a case of, of, uh, a really of good film, trying to try and find the right person to play Christine. Well, I mean, we couldn't phrase it more highly, but um, just one of the tags on the front cover here, mesmerising and unsettling, the best debut thriller for years. So our other successful debut author, Rosamund Lupton, a bit of look to her laurels. <laughs> OK, um, you can find out lots more about the book. You can read our reviews of it um, if you go to this uh, site, whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy. Judy. Uh, don't forget you can uh, download the podcasts, which have loads more material about all of the books. You get that free from iTunes. And in all of the books uh, this year, there's lots of extra content at the back, little mini interviews with all of the authors, um, some suggestions for discussions about the books, lots more stuff there. So make sure you look at the back. There's some, some extra free stuff in there for you. And enjoy before I go to sleep. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.